Yo, my name is Benjamin and in this video, I'll show you how to create a responsive navigation with drop downs completely from scratch. So this is our starting setup. We have a navigation stack and all it currently contains is a stack with an icon and the title. I'll select the navigation and I'll hit T and I'll start typing right here to add our first text layer onto the stack. Then I'll select a text style that I pre-made to get the styling just right. Next, I'll hit Command D to duplicate this item a few times and I'll change the content in the process. So this yields us a few different navigation items. I'll hold Shift and select all of these in one go and I'll right click to add a new stack. Then I'll set width to fill, height to fit content and distribute to end. And I'll also set the gap to 25 pixels. So now we have our basic setup in place. I'll jump to the asset panel and I'll drag in a carrot. This is a very simple component that I prepared. It's a single graphic wrapped in a frame and that frame is rotated in the second variant. So let's go back and group these. I'll select both, right click, and I'll select add stack, and then I'll right click again and hit fit content. Now we can add some padding to the top and bottom as well. And there we go. I'll decrease the gap a little bit and then we can turn this into a component. So I'll hit Command K, select Create Component, and you can give this any name you'd like. So let's zoom in a little bit and let's add a second variant. I'll name the first one Default and the second one Open. And on this second one, I'll set Opacity to 0.5 and I'll change the variant of the carrot. And for the text, I just had it selected and hit five on my keyboard, which is a nice little shortcut to quickly set opacity. So that's it for the triggers of our dropdowns. And we can always customize the label here as well. Next, let's add our first dropdown. So I'll select our component instance, and then I'll open up the insert menu and I'll head over to the new menus category and I'll grab one of these ones. And I'll drag and drop it right onto the component we just made. And this is a nice little shortcut to quickly add it as a relative overlay. Here we can tweak the appear effect and even the spring transition. And let's set height to fit content again and I think all of these settings look good so we can now select the trigger and set on open to the open variant and if we give that a preview that should mostly do the trick I see I get a little text cursor here on hover and we don't have any links just yet to fix the cursor, I'll add a user select property that is set to none to the component. And let's also add some links to the menu here. I'll just link them all to framer.com and I'll make sure they have one of the link styles that I had already set up in this project. This also ensures they get a nice little hover state, which you can easily define within your link styles. All right, so we have our first dropdown in place, but as you can see, the setup doesn't scale down to a phone breakpoint at all. So let's go ahead and fix that. First, let's select our navigation and turn this into a component. Here, we can create a navigation variant that we can also then use on the phone breakpoint. I'll create a second variant. I'll call it phone. 
and I'll set width to 390, which is the default phone breakpoint width in Framer. Then let's go back and actually set this variant to the phone variant. And let's also set height to fit content here, knowing that we'll be able to create a menu that expands and collapses and thus changes in height. So let's go back into the component here and actually design the basics of our phone layout. I'll resize the height. I'll flip the direction of the phone stack itself. And I'll do the same for the stack containing all of our links, setting distribute to start as well. Now we really need a menu icon that can close and expand our menu. So let's go to the assets panel and drag in the menu icon. This is one that I have prepared, but it's super simple. It's just two frames that get rotated in the second variant. So I can drag this into the primary one. And then we really need to group it with our little logo here. So I'll select both. Wrap them in a stack. And then I'll hit fit content again. And then we can set visible to no on the desktop version as we don't need this icon on desktop. So let's name this layer the top layer, just to make it a bit easier for us to understand. This one we want to set width to fill. We can now bring back our menu icon and we can set distribution to space between to stretch it out. We can then also set padding to zero on the phone variant and add 20 pixels of additional left padding on this top layer. I'll set this one to 64 pixels just to ensure the height matches with the desktop height perfectly. And now things are starting to come together. We do still have a little bit of a problem in our setup. And that is that on desktop, we have this trigger with a drop down menu, but on mobile, it doesn't really make sense to reuse this same trigger as there is no such hover interaction. But we would like to reuse the links so we don't have to define those twice or edit them in two separate places later on. So with the drop down menu selected, I'll turn that entire layer into a component. And we should make sure we give it an appropriate name so we can recognize it later on. And here we can also define a default variant and design a version to be used in our phone breakpoint or in our phone variant within the navigation component. So I'll change the fill color to match, remove the radius, I'll remove the border. Let's also remove these icons and add a sub label here. I'll quickly use an existing textile for this. Now I'll delete the icons. And let's make sure that these are a bit taller as they're designed for mobile. And then let's tweak the gap and padding here as well. And finally, I can add a bottom border to the topmost links here. And there we go. That's starting to look like a proper mobile list. So let's go back to the navigation. Our drop down menu now is a component, the one we just created. But we also have our trigger with its drop down menu on phone. So let's delete it from there. And then let's just also drag in the links directly onto the canvas here. This doesn't do anything for the actual navigation, but it's very useful for ourselves to quickly jump back into it. I will duplicate this instance here and then switch to the phone variant. And this one we can actually add to our list of links. Set width to fill. And there we go. 
instead of showing these links on hover like we have on desktop, these same links are now directly visible within the phone menu. Let me quickly rename this stack to links. And we can add a bit of padding to the left and right sides here and tweak the gap. Not all of our links have drop downs, so any inline link we can now also update just to match the styling on the phone variant here. So I'll select all of these holding shift and then let's set width to fill, height to 56 pixels. I'll set the phone variant to fit. And then let's go back and set the vertical align to middle here as well. There we go. I'll add some padding to the bottom of our phone variant here. This is useful when dealing with viewport height on mobile to account for things like the dynamic address bar. Next, I'll hit F to draw a new frame and we can turn these into little separator lines with width set to fill, height to one, and fill to a dark gray color. Next, we can drag them onto our links stack, give them a name, and then I'll duplicate it a few times, and I'll move it down each time to separate our inline links. Now, this is starting to look like something, but we really only have one dropdown. Let's add a second dropdown for resources as well. I'll head over to the Assets panel, right click on our links, and I'll hit Duplicate. And I'll rename it to Resources here. So now we have a second component with all of the same styles. I can update the subtitle, and then I can change the links here. So we can add a few different ones like Blog, Careers, maybe Docs. Then back in our navigation component, we can drag it from the assets panel onto the canvas here, just to make sure we don't forget about it and can access it quickly. And we could even add more links, right? They don't have to be three. This is why we often have height set to auto or fit content. So I'll add two new items. This one I'll call tutorials. And I'll grab this one and I'll call this one templates. Now I see that the order got a little messed up on our phone variant because of what I just did. So we can manually change the sorting to match here. And then I miss a bottom border so I can right click copy style. And then I can go to the docs item, right click and hit paste style. We could have also right clicked on the phone variant and selected reset order overrides. This just does it for you, automatically matching the order of the primary variant. So let's move the sublabel back on top. We're all good on the order here. So let's go back to our navigation and we can delete the old resources label, duplicate our product item with a drop down, rename the title to resources, and then we can go over to its drop down menu and replace it with our resources links. And this keeps all of the relative overlay settings intact, like its positioning and the appear effects. So we have our drop down menu in place on desktop. Let's also make sure we can reuse these links on the phone variant. We no longer need this separator because resources is now a drop down and not an inline link. So let's delete it and head over to the assets panel and bring in our resources links. Let's switch it to the phone variant. I'll again set the width to fill. And there we go. Here we actually have an additional bottom border that we no longer need. And that is looking more like it. So let's go to the homepage and give this a preview to see what we have so far. 
So we have two little drop downs here. And on resources, we actually kind of broke our links. So let's go back into that component. And I'll quickly add a link to framer.com for each navigation item. And we only have to add these links onto the primary variant. The phone variant will inherit these changes. And there we go. Now we have links in our resources dropdown as well. Our phone breakpoint is still broken though. We only have this expanded state to which it's now set by default. So it's time to work on our expanding and collapsing interactions. For this, we'll need two variants. So I'll select the phone variant and create an additional one based off of it. Let's call that one the phone open variant. I'll quickly sort my layers here. And let's update the menu icon states. And then I'll select our top stack and I'll drag a new interaction link from it to the phone open variant and vice versa. So now we can tap on our little header here to switch between these two variants. Next, I'll select the links stack and set the opacity to zero. And then we'll select the phone variant itself and we can actually remove the gap value from both of these. I don't think we need it, but mostly we want to set height to 64 and remove the bottom padding and also set overflow to hidden. So now we have a proper collapsed state. The expanded state, however, we want to make sure always occupies the entirety of the viewport, but never exceeds it because then we can make sure that it becomes scrollable. So I've set both max and min height to 100 VH. Next, I'll set overflow to scroll and I'll add an overscroll property as well, which is set to contain by default. This makes sure that when there are enough navigation items, you can scroll the navigation and it doesn't scroll the page behind it. So now we have all the building blocks in place we have these reusable link components that are used as relative overlays or drop-down menus on our desktop variant. These links can be edited and customized and they'll be updated across all your breakpoints. As these same links are used on the phone variant and are just surfaced in line. Now that would have been a lovely ending to this video, but I just noticed that the developer's item is still in the wrong place. It should really be below resources and not below product. So let's go ahead and fix that. Because we're animating between these two states, we always want to make sure that the order matches exactly. Otherwise we'd get unwanted animations between these two layers. So all we need to do here is move the developer's item and its separator one layer down, which I can do using the arrow down keys. And then I'll do the same thing in the phone variant. So now the orders should match again and the developer's item is below resources. One final tip is that you might want to remove the border here on the phone open variant. So it will fade out as the menu expands and you're not stuck with a bottom border in its expanded state. If we preview this, you can see our mobile navigation is working and animating nicely. And our drop-down menus are also working on desktop. Plus our navigation is responsive as it switches to the phone variant on the phone breakpoint. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful and stay tuned for more videos coming soon.